This episode of the Sleuthcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company where they say our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. Mad Canadian will be at the Car- will be in Cary this Thursday at 4 to 7 at the OLC Shrine Cafeteria for some barbecue and bingo. Again, this Thursday, 4 to 7, Cary, Ohio, barbecue and bingo at the OLC Shrine Cafeteria. Be sure to follow him on Facebook and Twitter. For more information about him and his food truck and where he'll be heading to next. The Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, who are the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. This episode of the Sloopcast is also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. The Iron Bean Coffee Company is an Ohio-based, Toledo-based, Harrisburg-based coffee company who puts integrity at the core of what they do. Both back the supply chain to the farmers and... Uh, you know, basically taking care of some of their coffees are single origin beans. All of their coffees are fair trade certified, making sure they're taking care of the farmers who are supplying the beans, but also making sure that that care and that integrity also then extends to you, the customer, ensuring you're getting the freshest, highest quality handcrafted beans that are possible. So all of that basically means that your coffee not only is being produced with integrity, but it is also coming to you in the way that brings you the best flavor by ensuring that it's safe and that it is fresh and all of that. So you can find your new favorite coffee over at ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. How you doing, Kyle? How you doing, YouTube? Um... Uh, this is uh, episode number two for this sit down for us. And we still kind of don't want to be here. <laughs> it's okay. There there are plenty of other teams who didn't have a, didn't have a good weekend uh, too. So we're going to, I know you don't, but we're going to talk about it anyway, Jared. So because we're professionals. Uh, sure. Okay. Let's, let's get it. Let's get into it, Jared. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? I'm okay. I'm okay, Jared. How are you? <laughs> I don't believe you. You know, everybody's going through that five stages of denial, and I, I actually Of moved grief, on and you're currently on denial? Yes, five stages of grief. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and I've actually, I've actually moved on pretty quick to that, so I'm, I'm kind of just like, all right, Yep, sucked. Yeah, just really dug into you for hours and all that too. But I'm ready to move on. I'm ready to move past this and think about the future here. So I'm okay. I'm okay. I think if if Ohio State can put together a good offensive line for next season, because that's my biggest concern, losing a lot of talent, losing probably to your both of your offensive, well, yeah. Anyway, there's going to be some turnover on the on the offensive line. So if they can figure out the offensive line, I think, you know, you take all of the freshmen that are currently freshmen and then give them another year in the system. And now suddenly they're sophomores. And now you have a second year starting quarterback instead of a first year starting quarterback. I I think that. I think that you have a really nice team next year i I think is is what we're looking at uh a lot of amazing talent like i said in this freshman class who are going to be maybe the third super sophomores is what we can only hope for kyle you you had a great stat you were we were just when we were just casually talking before we turned the microphones on all but three of the freshmen from this recruiting class is that what you told me yeah all i think all um Plus, they had 23 freshmen coming in here, and 20 of those 23 played this year, at least some, or right. one or one play. But. Yeah, I was about to say <laughs> you 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 were literally played for one play. <laughs> yes. No. No. He he had two. No. He did. He handed the ball off twice. Oh, my bad. My bad. <laughs> but yeah, so 20 of the 23 played. I think the only ones that didn't play was. Offensive lineman Chrisman, uh, the safety uh, Jalen Johnson, and the 
tight end Sam Hart. Everybody else played at least two snaps. All right, Kyle, we, we're, 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 this is literally not our Ohio State yep. episode. I know. Let's, All right. Let's, let's get into uh, taking a look around the country to see uh, what happened this week. Sure. So um, you want to start in the Big it's, Ten? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, man, Nebraska again, Jared. Another close one. This is number eight. My heart uh, breaks one, for Nebraska. This is number eight loss where they lost by one score this time to Iowa, 28 to 21. And it looked like going into the fourth quarter, they got this win. It's like, my gosh, Nebraska's actually going to win. It's actually going to win. And nope. You, you can't, you can't have a punt blocked and win the game. I think that's a, uh, there's an old Jim Trestle stat about how the team, if a team blocks a kick, if they block a punt, they win the game like 90 plus percent of the time, something yeah. crazy like that. Um, yeah. Greatest three and nine team of all time. I don't know if, I don't know if you want to put that on a banner or not, but it's true. This is the greatest three and nine team to ever exist. I tell you what, like I did like what I saw out of their uh, freshman quarterback uh, Smothers, I think is his name. Reminds me a lot. Reminds me a lot like Martinez. So that's, Good and is bad. That, says, okay. The good okay. and bad. The okay. good and the bads of Martinez. So I don't know. I I think well, it, I think it, it, at least he's a freshman, whereas Martinez yes. was still doing freshman things as a seventeenth mm-hmm. year senior. Yep. Yep. Sparty Jared. Sparty getting the victory over Penn State thirty to twenty seven, and the media and the fans not happy with Franklin. Not happy after that loss. Yeah, um, you know, you get a big raise, then you lose, and that's, I guess that's how that goes sometimes. Well, same thing with Michigan State. He got a big raise, and he won. I mean, I guess one of them had, yeah, okay. One of them Any, had to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. This is, I'm, I, I'm sorry, I can't look at Michigan State without thinking, how the hell? Did Ohio State run them off the field like they were Akron? And then, you know, I got the easy answer, and that's because their offense was clicking and they forced Michigan State to be one dimensional and it wasn't the one dimensional that they wanted to be. That's yeah, how it was. I, yeah, I suppose. Anyway. All right. And, and then the last one the Gophers, Jared, row that boat, upsetting Wisconsin, making Wisconsin not go to the big 10 championship game in yeah. Wisconsin, 23 to 13 paving the way for, for Iowa to face Michigan this weekend. Yay. Yeah. You got two, you got two yellow teams going at it. Oh, <laughs> oh. that's, that's one way of looking at it, Kyle. Oh, <laughs> right. no, enough big 10 here, Jared, enough big 10. Oh, you, you, you music to my ears. <laughs> Uh, let's see other games here. Ole Miss beats Mississippi State thirty-one to twenty-one. Yes, Sun Card. Eh. Eh. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. it's a it's a top nineteen. They won a game. Um, I, I think it's mildly interesting, only because Ole Miss is going to maintain their spot in the top ten. Uh, and I guess maybe just because Lane Kiffin's Lane Kiffin, his name has been tied to a bunch of jobs because I just don't. And rightfully so. People just don't believe Lane Kiffin will stay anywhere for more than two years. <laughs> Gee, I wonder why. Um, yeah. But no, it's just I think it's interesting from that standpoint as we start to take a, a peek at the the coaching carousel. Yep. All right. Uh did, you, did we want to bring up our, our ratings here, Jared, since we're... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to gonna move you over so I can see you a little bit better here. So then, as Jared's doing this up, I'm um, bringing this up here as well. Um, the next game here, Cincinnati beating East Carolina 35-13 to to continue their undefeated streak this year. 
yeah, uh, congrats to Cincinnati on that. Um, I mean, I'm going to cheer for him. I, and I know there's a lot of people who don't like that, but that's my playoff mm-hmm. team right there. I, All right. So, no, all right, Jared, now that you have this up, we do have to move some people around here. Yeah, we are. We talked about Ohio State on, on yesterday's episode. Uh, we're going to have to go. Uh, we did it to Oregon last week. We have to do it to Ohio State this week. This is where two lost teams go. Now we can have a conversation about maybe moving some of the, if insane chaos happens, maybe we like, maybe that's what B is like in case of absolutely bonkers, insane chaos, here's some teams, but we're, we, we can do that at the end of the show. Okay. So then, so then huh. the first team here, Georgia, being well, Georgia tech 45 yeah. to nothing. Yeah. They stay there. Uh, Cincinnati, I think I think you keep Cincinnati. I think you keep Cincinnati where they're at in the third. There, I think you bump. You would have to bump Michigan up to that second spot. Then, that's probably fair. I think you move them up to there. Cincinnati stays there. Alabama. Mm, no, no. Here, here's here's where we get interesting. Here, so Alabama beats Auburn twenty four to twenty two in quadruple overtime, only scoring. Three points up until they scored their only touchdown um, in in the um, in regular time with like what under a minute left, and this and this is not a good Auburn team either. Not a good Auburn team. So possibly could move up um, Alabama down, but the other games here, Oklahoma state. Let's just go ahead um, and do it for right now. As you bring up the important okay. game to be discussed here. Okay. So Oklahoma state, um, pulling this game up. Yep. Oklahoma state came back to beat Oklahoma 37 to 33. So now two loss Oklahoma team now, Jared, per our current rules. Yeah. Goes down to the C tier as well. All right. Then Oklahoma state possibly moving up to there. I, I think mark? it's I think it's fair. You had Bama struggle against a really bad Auburn team. They've had a couple struggle wins lately against teams that I'm sorry, just because they're in the SEC doesn't mean they're good. Auburn's not good. Uh, and Oklahoma State, I thought, had a really nice win against a top 10 Oklahoma team. I, I don't know. I don't know how else to swing it than that. Mm hmm. Um, uh, the, and then the next games here, Notre Dame, I, Notre Dame played Stanford 45 to 14. So the question here between those three teams, I, it's going to be, I think you still got to keep Notre Dame as an A tier just because I think they can backdoor sure. getting in. Sure. Let's just say, let's say hypothetically, let's, let's just say Georgia wins, yeah. Michigan wins. Uh-huh. Cincinnati wins. Yep. That 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 last spot. Now let's let's do let's do big old chaos here. Let's do big chaos. Okay, hold hold on, hold on. Before we do that, um, screw it. Screw screw all the rest of the games. We're 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 just doing this now. We're just doing this now. We're we're going playoff yeah. scenarios. Is that what we're doing now? Yep. Let's do playoff all right. scenarios because all the other games, I don't. Don't care that about LSU beating Texas A&M, Oregon winning. Guys, we're okay. calling an audible. Baylor, okay, wins, and BYU beats USC, and and then NC State beats North Carolina. That's that's it right there. So, <laughs> so we're do, we're doing this right now. Um, so Oregon's okay. Oregon, Oklahoma State's playing Baylor, two loss team. Now let's yeah. say Baylor loses. Or excuse me, say Baylor wins. Okay. Georgia wins. That puts Alabama at two loss. Oklahoma State at two loss. Then Notre Dame, I'd. It sucks saying this, but they they would they would be back door. Into this game here, because look, Notre Dame doesn't play have to play anybody else. Ohio State's not going to be playing anybody else right now, so there's no way for Ohio State to move up ahead of uh, ahead of Notre Dame here. It, it's these are your six teams period 
that's going to get into the playoffs. All right. You think it's now, that now, certain? Now, now you think it's well, hold on, hold on. Oh, 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 no, no, you're 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 right. You're right. Because the pure 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 chaos. Michigan loses. Cincinnati loses. Okay, now you're getting into some deep deep chaos here. Congrats on just you. Just congrats on naming the episode. Deep, deep chaos. Yeah. <laughs> Man, no, no, no. Let's let's move some teams to the B tier here. Here for that deep, deep chaos. You put Ohio State at B tier. Well, you put hold on, Baylor. Hold on, hold on. Hold you put on. Baylor. Hold on. Baylor. Oh crap. Baylor first and foremost because they have a. Why can't I grab Baylor? Baylor because. They have a chance to win their title game at two losses. Yep. Oklahoma, mm -hmm. because they have their chance to win their title game at two Oregon. losses. Pitt. Oregon. You said Oklahoma. Excuse, my bad. O uh, Oregon. <laughs> uh, Pitt, they have a chance to win their title game at two losses. I'm trying. I'm, I'm, guys, I'm, I'm sorry. Conference champion at two losses. I, I'm trying to... I, cause I've seen a lot of Ohio state fans be like with enough chaos, is it possible? And I'm telling you right now, one of the set rules in stone for the conference committee is to treat the conference championship, the conference champions with a, with a high deal of weight. Okay. All right. Fine. Okay. Um, Iowa can win the big 10 at two losses. Uh, Wake Forest cannot. Michigan State cannot. Uh, sorry, UTSA and Coastal Carolina. I do not give a fuck. Uh, same with you, San Diego State. Um, Houston could be a one-loss conference champion if they beat Cincinnati. I feel like that's a real stretch, but I went ahead and did it. Um, Kyle, I having a hard, hard time seeing Ohio state get it. Cause if we're talking like chaos scenarios, chaos scenarios include, include teams like Baylor, potentially Oregon. Okay. All right. Potentially I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to throw some, throw some um, numbers here at you. So I know it doesn't matter, but let's, let's base it off of, cause I, I, I like the top four. I think what the top four is that came out for the AP I think should be what the, which, um, which I assume is the same top four we have right now. Um, it well, except that they have Alabama instead of instead of Oklahoma State, but pretty much exactly that Georgia, Michigan, Cincinnati. Then they have Alabama, Oklahoma State, Notre Dame, and Ohio State. So the only way the only way I can see Ohio state moving up. So they're in seven. So they have to have three teams ahead of them lose. So, <clears throat> but then you got Baylor who could jump up Ohio state because they play Oklahoma state and would be a conference champion too. So I, I don't know if there really is a chance for Ohio state. So let's just say, Let's just say worse. Let's just say K all chaos happens. Michigan loses. Michigan loses, Does which Michi of course means I, I'm at least. So we're, we're going scenarios now. I'm and I'm, we're going to, which means Iowa wins. Let's, let's keep Iowa that in mind. Wins. So, so Iowa currently is 15th. Could they move Iowa up from 15 all well, the way up to fourth? Well, we don't have Kyle. Th we're, we're recording this on a Sunday night. We don't know. know what Iowa currently is, according I, to the playoff I, committee. I know. I'm, I'm just going off of very similar. It, it, it's similar, but what what the AP has as we're, we're releasing this, though. So but let's say, okay, in this scenario right now, so let's say Cincinnati loses. They, they just drop out. And let's say Oklahoma State... Well, Alabama would lose too. Um, let's say Oklahoma State loses to Baylor, then you got a Baylor two-loss conference champion that would be moved up as well. 
And I could see the committee putting them, and rightfully so, move them up ahead of Ohio State. Does Oregon win as in, in your scenario? Um, Oregon. Um, ooh, yeah, that's a good one, too. Oregon. You could then have Oregon. If Oregon wins, I'm just thinking worst case scenario or best case scenario for Buckeye fans here. Oh God! It's well. In that case, it would be Oregon <laughs> losing. If if that's Oregon what you're would doing, have to lose because Oregon Utah already has lose. three losses. Mm -hmm. Oregon would have to lose. Pitt. I'm not concerned with anybody in the ACC. Who so, is that? Pittsburgh's the highest ACC team here, and they're seventeenth. Yeah, not not worried. Not worried about that take, at take, all. I'm I'm, I'm, I put Pitt back at C tier. Already, and I already shadow moved Houston back down to C tier just to keep this as legitimate as possible. So, so if that's the case, so if that's the case, man, you would have to put Baylor and Notre Dame in. Baylor being a conference champion, Notre Dame with a one loss, making it in, and then you're going to have the tough decision. Does Michigan still go in over Ohio Iowa, State, who would have just oh, beat them? Mm -hmm. And Ohio State, who, as well, since Michigan, who Michigan beat Ohio just State. beat convincingly? Mm -hmm. yeah. No, no, it's not happening. Mm -hmm. Sorry, guys, it's done for Ohio State. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's done. It's done. Even it, Kyle just gave you the best possible scenario. I think is the best possible scenario, the most amount of chaos, the most amount of teams eliminated. And even with this, like Baylor, Notre Dame get in. And it doesn't even matter. Oklahoma State, Baylor, Baylor. Yeah. I mean, Oklahoma State has a stronger well, but I think I Baylor. Get If Baylor wins, upsets Oklahoma State, they knock out Oklahoma State. I believe Baylor just replaces them. Hey, go in. Notre and Dame backdoors their way in. That's three spots. And then that last spot, you think Ohio State's going to get it? Oregon would get it if Oregon won. But even if they don't, I would say that Big Ten champion Iowa would get it before Ohio State. And Michigan, if it comes down to Ohio State versus Michigan, guys, we just saw it. And and it wasn't exactly. close. Let let's just let's be real honest here. It wasn't close. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So I don't don't really see don't really see anything there, Jared. So, all right. I think this is a good time for an ad break, real quick here, Jared. And then we'll yeah. If you want to kind of go back to our our rankings, there we go. Control Z is a wonderful drug. <laughs> all right. Let's go ahead and do a quick ad break, and I'll go ahead and lay this off, Jared, with Mad Canadian Barbecue Company mentioned at the top of the show you can catch the mad canadian in Cary, ohio this thursday four to seven at the olc shrine cafeteria for some barbecue and bingo let me go ahead and read you a couple of reviews here jared um we got one here it said tried all the food here today for the first time um is one reviewer said he Really glad he did. Sliced brisket sandwich was one of the best he's had in Ohio. Pulled pork was really good. Can't wait to return and try more of their food. And here's another one. It says his best food truck, hands down. Barbecue's smoked right on location and is always fresh that day. Brisket and pork is never dry and always full of flavors that melt in your mouth. What more do you what more do you need to hear to Put away your Thursday plans. Head on over to the OLC Shrine Cafeteria this Thursday to get some of that delicious barbecue from the McKinney Barbecue Company, who are the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. This episode of the Soupcast is also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company, a veteran Marine-owned company. Uh, all of that, right? Like all the stuff I said at the beginning. Kyle, but forget all that. We, we've talked a lot of bad news this week on the podcast uh, Kyle, I have good news. I have good news. I have good news for you and for everyone listening. The cinnamon roll is back in stock. Yes. The cinnamon roll flavored coffee is back in stock, everybody. Uh, just wanted, I know I've been saying it's been out of stock for weeks. So I just wanted to go ahead and throw that out there. Still in, ch still in chalk. I almost said chalk. Still in stock is the white chocolate peppermint. 
which is exciting. That's a seasonal. It's still out there. It's still available. Um, the I know we are having trouble there for a minute with the Bananas Foster. It is currently in stock as well. Um, the Mom's Carrot Cake and the Dylan's Grog, both still currently out of stock, but they will be restocked soon. It will be restocked soon. Uh, the Rage K-Cups and the Ride or Die K-Cups, those will be back in stock soon. So keep an eye out for those. And we still got sales. We still got some sales on the Drink from the Skull of Your Enemy, the Cast Iron, the Integrity, and much, much more. Guys, these are all amazing coffees, flavored or not. And you can find your new favorite coffee over at ironbeancoffee.com. Kyle, that is Iron Bean Coffee. Oh, yeah. Okay. Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. I want, I want to give a shout out to one of our, a, um, a guest, a guest on our show here, um, the great Tom or Jared. Never, never technically <laughs> had, had been a, a guest. Uh, never, never technically been a guest. Okay. Um, a good friend <laughs> of the show, Tom or. Now we have done the morning scoop for him before. That yes, count? that's right. Um, had a great, great tweet as, um, the news is official now where, Lincoln Riley is going to USC. He says here in good old Tom fashion, I guess you could say this went down sooner than expected. Oh, oh man. <laughs> that's, that's bad, Tom. Sorry. Sorry, Tom. Tom, I'm sorry. Man. That's, 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 that's not good. That's not good. Oh, I loved it. <laughs> I loved it, Jared. All Come right. on, man. Come you on. You want to do another, you want to do another chaos? Like Ohio State's done. Like we acknowledge this. Um, I'm, uh, I, I'm going to move Pitt back down here. Um, ACC's done. I, Kyle, I'm having, I'm having a hard time. So like if, if, if the games go chalk, right. Then I yep. think without a doubt, these are the four teams, right? If everyone who's expected to win this weekend wins this weekend, these are the four teams. Yeah. Do you do you have any doubt about that? There is no doubt. You got all of these are conference champions. Yeah. And then I, you have What I'm really you asking have, you Kyle, could Cincinnati get screwed? No. No, because they had they had exactly what they needed to happen here. You got You got a you got a Pac-12 out of it. You got ACC out of it. You got two of your Power Five conferences out of it. And here's the remaining three, SEC, Big Ten, Big 12. This is the perfect scenario for Cincinnati. They're, they're, they're in here. The only other scenario is that a one-loss team could jump them, but that one-loss team is the team that they beat earlier in the season. All right, so... What if one game doesn't go chalk? What if Bama wins? Yeah. Ooh. Bam. Ooh. Yeah. Bama becomes SEC champion. Georgia gets their first loss. Now we all of a sudden have, a, have five teams for four spots. Yep. Then you have Oklahoma. Man, that, that's tough because then you got Oklahoma State who would have just beat Oklahoma. And would then just beat Baylor here, and then who did who 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 does Cincinnati play? Houston. It's okay. not the same. So it's not the same. They are they're just in the the top twenty five. They may be twentieth when we record, or yeah, when this um when the committee comes out with their rankings here, but still not the same as playing Oklahoma, who might be. 15th or 16th or so. And then you got a top 10 Baylor team as well. Not, not the same. It won't be the same. I, I think if Bama wins, I think you would see Georgia, Michigan. Well, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I got his mind spinning. Oh gosh. I dare, I, spinning dare, dare I, dare I say Jared. Well, no, I, I think I think they would put Alabama one. They would put Michigan two, Georgia three, Oklahoma State four. I 
I don't agree with the committee doing that, but I, I think I agree with your assessment that the committee would do that. Does that make sense? I think the committee's wrong for doing that. But I think you're right for saying that the committee would do that. I don't like it. I want Cincinnati to get in. I want I want Fickle to I want I, I know. I, I know. I, but I just I, I'm just I, I'm just I'm just I'm just people calling me a Cincinnati hater or something about this. Not not true. I, I, I want Cincinnati to do as well as Cincinnati can do. It's not because I mean you look at this is this is me criticizing the system, not criticizing Cincinnati. This, this, this is going to make me sound. That. This is going to make me sound so bad here, but look at look at Ohio State schedule where they played their four of their past five games: Penn State, Purdue, I know. Michigan State, Michigan, and then if they won another ranked team, and then look at Cincinnati's ECU, SMU, USF. And then Houston here, like it's it's not the same. It it really isn't. It's not. It's really not. Uh, I mean, yeah. But you're right. Ohio State had to play a hell of a November. A gauntlet. A gauntlet. It was a gauntlet here. And it would have been that much worse had they won and had to play Iowa. Um, but they didn't. Yep. The. Which I think is why, you know, maybe we moved Pitt back out of the conversation. And I don't know, like part of my part of my issue right now I'm having is that I kind of don't buy all the Big 12 rankings. I don't think Baylor's as good as people are ranking them to be. I don't think Oklahoma state's as good as people are ranking them to be. I don't think Oklahoma was as good as they were ranked. So I think you have a lot of artificially good looking teams here that kind of beat each other in a round Robin way that are, are preserving the lie that the big 12 is somehow good this year when I'm sorry, it's, kinda, it's not. Kind of sounds like sec every other year. The SEC, no, it's not because the Big Twelve is legitimately bad, and the SEC is is not. Are they as good as they are made out to be outside of say like Bama or Georgia this year? No, but yeah. they're still it's a high quality level of football mm -hmm. compared to what the Big Twelve is. Yeah, but I, know, I, I like our rankings here. I, I really do. <clears throat> I, I think this is what it truly should be after. Yeah, going it won't into... be what it is. They'll they'll continue to have Bama. Yeah, they'll they'll have they'll have Bama at four, and then Oklahoma State at five or six, and Notre Dame at the other. No, they'll I I I. Yep, I don't no, see I don't no, see Bama right. lower I, I than three. I don't see Bama lower than three, by what the committee says. Okay. I that's right. that's not that's obvious. This is our ranking. Kyle and I I think come came to a mutual conclusion here. Like this is our top six. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, yes. Kyle and I agree with this. This is our thoughts, but I don't think the committee is going to co-sign what Kyle and I have said. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, Jared, we have one ask Slipcast question. Okay. Uh, Florida Buck says the trend lately in college football has been towards the high powered passing offense. Has that pendulum now started swinging back towards the way of defense and smash mouth football? That's 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 a good way to put it. You you see you see these high power offenses that struggled against these defense, and now that's what they're all talking about this year. Georgia's stellar defense. Granted, they don't have that they didn't have that great of an offense, but you know it does its job. And and how many shutouts that that Alabama yeah. or not Alabama that Georgia's had this year says a lot it's it's hard shutting out shutting out anybody in in college football it really is hard but do i think this is the the next great trend no i do not i, I think what I you're looking think... i think it looks like that right now because there's a lack of great quarterback talent in college football right now i mean look at last year look at last year's and how high power offense won the games last year and the year before that with Joe Burrow. Mm -hmm. um, yep. No, it's, it's not, 
th- this year is a bit of an anomaly. Um, again, there, there's no great quarterbacks this year. You have some really, really good young quarterbacks, whether it be uh, Stroud or Young, who are very, very good, but very young and inexperienced quarterbacks. And then you, but as far as like, like who, who's Kyle, who's your number one quarterback pick? Say your team won one. Like, is there a Trevor Lawrence sitting there this year? A uh, uh, Justin Fields, a uh, Jared Goff? Like, who who is your quarterback pick right now if your team won one and you need a quarterback? It's team won one? Yeah, you, you got the first overall pick. Round one, pick one. Who's your quarterback? I, 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 think, the, I think the top picks, it's going to be between Sam Hartman out of Wake Forest. This is what I'm saying. You got Sam Howell out of UNC. I'm not excited. Nothing you're saying is exciting me as a, as a, if my team was, was sitting there trying to get the next franchise quarterback, Kenny Pickett, you're forgetting about Kenny Pickett. I don't Um, care about it. (laughs) Kenny Pickett's a good quarterback. (laughs) Um, He is. He is. Point is, is that it's, you're, you're going to find really good quarterbacks. You're going to find really good quarterbacks. Putting together an 11 man defense is difficult. Georgia did it this year. They recruit like crazy. Congrats to them. Oh, and the other one, too, and I, I just don't it's think hard. he's a good quarterback, is uh, Matt Corral. Okay. Um, I mean, <laughs> yeah, whatever. It's again, it, our. Are you asking me to be excited if my team just picked Matt Corral with the first overall pick? No, not, not, not in the least. There's no, there's no NFL quarterbacks going into the draft this year. No sure five. Could, could there, are there some really nice second round picks? Yeah. Are there guys who are second round picks that are going to get picked in the first round because of a severe lack of better options? Oh, hell yeah. Oh, hell yeah. But that that I see a bunch of second round guys. I look at college football mm-hmm. and I look at the quarterbacks ready the, to go into the NFL draft, and I see a bunch of second round guys. So yeah, why why are, why does it look like the defenses are so good this year? That's why. All of your yep. elite talented quarterbacks in college football right now are too young and too in and too inexperienced to be as dominant as they need to be. Mm-hmm. And again, yep, you're right all respect in the world to Georgia for putting together this defense, but it's, it's not a thing you can do consistently because one good quarterback is one good quarterback. A defense requires 11 dudes. That is hard. That is hard to do. So again, all the respect in the world to Georgia for doing it. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Kyle, you said that was the, uh, that was the only question. Yeah, that's it. That is it for today's right. episode uh come check out like t-shirts over at merch.thesleepcast.com or uh kyle kyle's wearing one of our merch.thesleepcast shirts right now it's actually a hoodie why not and uh i'm actually wearing one of our uh 7071 shirts that's the 7071 right there you can't really see it because it's too fine but uh it's a it's a reimagining of the old nfl canton bulldogs logo that uh, I did, and you can you can go pick up one of those if you want over at seven zero seven one dot So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just do if these trees could talk again, because why not? Uh, it's a thing I've been doing. I've just been playing the same band twice in a row. Why not? It's fun. So we're gonna do that again. So with all of that being said, Kyle, I want or sorry, Kyle's corner. I totally I lost really, over Kyle's corner. I don't really. I don't really have my. I saw you didn't have anything in the notes. Maybe that's why I did yeah. it. I. It's it just fun See seeing as we're so as as we're still recording this on um, Sunday evening night. Just how many more recruits are just decommitting after finding out about coaches leaving, coaches transferring, or or moving on, and a lot a lot happening. So. Give, we're going to give it a couple of weeks and then we're going to kick back up again, do another recruiting round here because we're, we're due to talk about some recruiting. So I think here in a, in about a week or two, Jared, I think we'll, yeah. we'll talk again about some recruiting because there's 
lot of changes and some interesting developments here. So we'll stay tuned in a couple of weeks and we'll get everybody caught up on the recruiting. Um, yeah. updates. Early national signing day is coming up quick. So uh, that preview is, is coming. That's it, Jared. That is all it. right. That's it. All right. So now, now we're doing, if these trees could talk. So uh, with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support local podcasters. Once again, this is If These Trees Could Talk. Thank you.